Guided by Sinto, his ancestral sword, Kenshi destroyed Shao Kahn and saved Earthrealm from Armageddon. But he had not yet exacted revenge on Shang Tsung. The elusive sorcerer had hidden himself somewhere in Outworld. Jax allowed Kenshi access to a newly developed portal that permitted travel among realms. In return, Kenshi agreed to serve the fledgling Outer World Investigation Agency. After countless missions, he finally located Shang Tsung. With a roar, Kenshi plunged Sinto through Shang Tsung's chest. The magical sword drew the souls of Kenshi's ancestors into itself, leaving Shang Tsung a withered husk. His vendetta fulfilled, Kenshi left Shang Tsung to die, alone and powerless. Shao Kahn had used rain to crush the Edenian resistance but had not granted him an army. For this betrayal, Rain drowned the Emperor in his own blood. A grateful Raiden thanked Rain for eliminating the Emperor and saving Earthrealm. His heroics were befitting of a son of Argus. Rain's lost heritage was a revelation to him. That he was a direct descendant of an Edenian god proved his superiority. Power was his by right. His divinity confirmed, Rain's path was clear. He would use Shao Kahn's army to rule not just Outworld, but all the realms. To Raiden's surprise and horror, Rain's first target is Earthrealm. Shokan and Centaur alike were enraged that Baraka, Shao Kahn's trusted enforcer, had turned on their master and killed him just as Earthrealm was within their grasp. But their anger turned to admiration as the lifeless body of Shao Kahn transformed into that of the treacherous sorcerer Shang Tsung. Shang had attempted to claim the realm for himself by posing as Shao Kahn. The deception had not fooled Baraka. He had recognized Shang Tsung's scent and torn out his throat. With Earthrealm finally in Shao Kahn's control, Baraka's loyalty and bold action were rewarded. The Tarkatans replaced the Centaur as the Emperor's favored race. Though he had pledged his life to the Lin Kuei, Cyrax left the clan to help the Earthrealm heroes turn back Shao Kahn's invasion. For this act of desertion, he was marked for termination by the new Grand Master, Sector. Surrounded and severely outnumbered, Cyrax prepared to meet his fate when Raiden came to his aid. With him were 100 Shaolin monks, the Lin Kuei were defeated, though Sector was not counted among the dead. Cyrax was offered sanctuary at the Wuxi Academy, where he has begun a new life as an honorable warrior for peace. With Shao Kahn dead, Ermac was no longer bound to him. Anarchy erupted within Ermac as the many warrior souls that comprised his being struggled for dominance. Only one had the strength of will to quiet the chaos. The conflict resolved, Ermac returned to Outworld 
determined to reunite with his past. Queen Sindel and Princess Katana were shocked to learn the truth, that trapped among the many spirits within Ermac was their husband and father, King Jared. Though he would never be the Jared they once knew, Ermac would forever serve and protect his queen and the Adenian people. Shao Kahn was defeated, but the intense battle rendered Jade unconscious. She slipped into a dreamlike state and found herself walking in an unknown realm. As she explored, her surroundings shifted and changed. Jade approached a lone figure who stood in the distance, a shimmering woman. She did not reveal her name, but spoke with an air of regal authority. Through the minds of countless mortals, the woman had been watching events as they unfolded over the centuries. She informed Jade that Shao Kahn's death was an outcome that must be reimagined. Jade was defenseless as the woman possessed her body and emerged in the waking world. After the invasion was thwarted, many of Jax's allies had seemingly disappeared, leaving him to clean up the mess on his own. He searched for Shao Kahn's remaining forces, utilizing a new cyber scanner designed to remotely access worldwide databases. Navigating its virtual reality interface, Jax inadvertently accessed Kano's brain through his optical laser implant. Their minds linked, Jax virtually battled Kano. Finally, he captured and quarantined Kano's consciousness within the Special Forces mainframe. The dangerous criminal had finally been neutralized. As the last remnants of Shao Kahn disintegrated, Johnny felt strange as if he had lost control of his body. Suddenly, powerful energy burst forth, destroying everything around him. Johnny sought the aid of Raiden and Nightwolf, but their efforts did nothing to stop these random spasms of destruction. Desperate, Raiden transported Johnny to Sado, the realm of order, where he could be taught to control his power. Johnny Cage will transform into a warrior powerful beyond mortal imagining. Victory over Shao Kahn came with a heavy price. Cabal's respirator was badly damaged, and if it was not repaired soon, he would surely die. Desperate, he tracked down Kano and forced from him the identity of the cyberneticist who developed Kano's eye laser. The good doctor was not easy to find, but he was more than eager to help for a price. Now Cabal is rebuilt. He is better than he was before, stronger, faster. He will need to be in order to repay his debt. Kano made a fortune selling arms to Shao Kahn and used the profits to upgrade his cybernetics. The added connectivity of his eye implant gave him unparalleled access to global communications. Using his mind, he navigated the databases of banks, law enforcement agencies, and other networks. But his activities left him vulnerable to hackers. Jax infiltrated Kano's mind and trapped his consciousness in the Special Forces mainframe. 
It wasn't long, however, until Kano managed to free himself. His consciousness spread like a virus throughout the Special Forces network of automated weaponry. Kano has become a one-man army. Kitana had ended Shao Kahn's life for his betrayal. She had discovered the truth about Melina, but rather than slay her as well, she took pity on her half-sister. She offered Melina a home within the Edenian aristocracy. She was, after all, of royal blood. Melina cautiously accepted her sister's invitation. With Melina and Jade at her side, Kitana formed a fighting force dedicated to bringing justice to the realms. Never again would a warlord arise to create such terror. Kung Lao had avenged his ancestor's death and saved Earthrealm from Shao Kahn's brutality. In quiet reflection with Raiden at the grave of the great Kung Lao, he touched the modest stone marker. Images of past events, moments of someone else's life, flashed through his mind, concluding with a lost battle against Goro. Raiden theorized that Kung Lao had unlocked memories of his past life. The Kung Lao that stood before Raiden was in fact the reincarnation of the great Kung Lao, who had been defeated by Goro 500 years ago. He had accomplished in the present what he could not in the past. Having defeated Shao Kahn, Liu Kang believed he was the only one capable of defending Earthrealm against outside threats. During the invasion, Raiden had been more burdened than ally. Brazenly, he demanded the Elder Gods grant him the Thunder God status. In a one-match Mortal Kombat tournament, Liu Kang defeated his former friend and mentor. Liu Kang's request was granted. He was made a god, the new protector of Earthrealm. Melina killed the Emperor in a fit of deranged fury. But she was unaware that her victory resulted from Shang Tsung's designs. He had imbued Melina with the ability to drain Shao Kahn's dark magic, rendering him vulnerable. Now Shang Tsung was ready to execute the next phase of his plan, murder Melina and take Shao Kahn's power for himself. But Melina instinctively wielded her new dark power against the sorcerer. Shang Tsung's end came quickly. Melina absorbed his soul, multiplying her strength. She then set out to claim an even bigger prize, the soul of a Thunder God. It took all of Nightwolf's power to destroy Shao Kahn. His spirit guide, the Wolf, had aided him in the battle. But in the aftermath, its presence was no longer felt. Nightwolf returned to his home, seeking the Elder's help in reconnecting to the spirit world. During their ritual, his Wolf returned to him, changed. Shao Kahn had tethered his soul to the wolf spirit in order to cheat death. 
Now corrupted with Shao Kahn's evil, Nightwolf has transformed into his animality, his bite converting his victims into subservient lycanthropes. Through Nightwolf, Shao Kahn will conquer Earthrealm, one mortal at a time. Quan Chi should never have resurrected Noob Saibot, nor should he have enhanced his power to defeat Shao Kahn. The revenant he created had broken free of his control. Noob had secretly formed an understanding with a cleric from the Realm of Chaos, and opened for him a portal to the Nether Realm. Shinnok, Quan Chi, and the Brotherhood of Shadow were unprepared as the forces of chaos overwhelmed them, leaving the underworld severely weakened. Satisfied with his work, the cleric, Havoc, returned to the realm of chaos. Noob Saibot remained to seize control of the nether realm. Shao Kahn was gone, but the scars of the merging of realms remained. Remnants of the invasion force roamed freely and had to be dealt with. But Earthrealm is vast, and Raiden is but one being. He recruited four warriors, one for each direction of the wind, and divided his soul, placing one part in each of them. Through these new heroes, Raiden can combat the forces of darkness in four places at once. Having defeated Shao Kahn, Reptile was feared by all. He forced Shang Tsung to regenerate his raptor race. The process took agonizing months, but soon Reptile heard the snarls of young broodlings throughout the flesh pits. Eventually, Shang Tsung had created an army of raptor warriors bred to serve Reptile. They stormed the realm, killing any Tarkatan, Shokan, or Centaur who opposed Reptile's rule. The intoxicating feeling of reuniting with his people blinded Reptile to the suffering of his former comrades. Reptile was home once more. Shao Kahn's death did nothing to relieve Scorpion's pain. The loss of his kin still weighed heavily upon him. For reasons he could neither explain nor understand, he was drawn to the home of the Shirai Ryu. Standing amid the rubble in solemn contemplation, Scorpion was visited by apparitions of his fallen comrades, who revealed the true mastermind behind their brutal deaths. Enraged, he returned to the Nether Realm. As the spirits of his kin immobilized Quan Chi, Scorpion slew him, finally avenging their deaths. Sector had dedicated his life to the Lin Kuei. His victories had brought honor to his father, the Grand Master. He had proven himself worthy. It was time to replace his father. In a bold attack, Sector smashed through a company of Lin Kuei guards as he pushed toward the Grand Master's chamber. 
There he found his father waiting. The Grand Master warned him that wearing the Dragon Medallion brought much power, but at a cost. Sector ignored the warning and slew his father, whose soul burst from his body and flew into the medallion. Sector had finally seized control of the Lin Kuei. Shang Tsung voraciously consumed Shao Kahn's soul, absorbing his immense power. Overwhelmed by his newfound sorcery, he fled to Outworld. Moments before suicide, Shang Tsung was visited by Bo Raicho. The mentor of warriors offered to teach him to control the dark magic, but for a special purpose. Liu Kang had become a god. The power had corrupted him, transforming him into a tyrant. He needed to be stopped. After rigorous training, Shang Tsung mastered the one technique that could finish Liu Kang. Vengeance would finally be his. Shiva had recognized the signs. Her people were out of favor and in decline. The Centaur would soon dominate Shao Kahn's forces, while the Shokan would move inexorably toward extinction. Shiva's act of defiance, her murder of Shao Kahn, made possible a new home for her people among the mortals of Earthrealm, a world free of both Tarkatan and Centaur. With cooperation from world leaders, Shiva secured for the Shokan the continent of Australia. In return, they would protect Earthrealm from future invasions. For her leadership, Shiva was exalted, the most honorable Shokan in their proud history. The spell that bewitched Queen Sindel had been broken. She did battle with Shao Kahn and slew him, punishment for the suffering he brought upon her and millions of others throughout the realms. She dissolved the sorcery that bound Edenia with Outworld and began restoring her realm to its former glory. The many races of Outworld were impressed. Not only had Sindel defeated Shao Kahn, but she had shown great leadership in chaotic times. They willingly offered her their allegiance. Under Sindel's governance, the realms of Edenia and Outworld remain merged in spirit. Shao Kahn's violent death shook the very core of Smoke's being and dislodged his earliest memories. Tomas Rabada was only a boy when he was abducted by an obscure cult and sacrificed to a demon. Burned alive, he returned to the mortal realm as an Anenra, a creature of smoke and vapor. His captors were helpless against his shapeless form as he lashed out with rage, killing them all. His murder avenged, he returned to his human form, remembering nothing of his former life. Now aware of his true identity, Smoke understands he is no mere assassin. His destiny has been revealed. The loss of friends and allies during the battle with Shao Kahn took its toll on Sonya Blade's sanity. 
She left the special forces and went into seclusion to cope with her grief. But her solitude was brief as she found herself regularly visited by an apparition who claimed to be her missing father. With her father as a guide, Sonia embarked on a mission to exterminate what remained of Shao Kahn's army. Despite telling the world that he was simply doing his job, Stryker was made a hero for saving Earth from invasion. He received both the key to the city and the Congressional Medal of Freedom. Press and paparazzi hounded his every move. His biography spent a year on the bestseller lists. Stryker action figures flew off the shelves and into every young boy's hand. But when approached by Hollywood for the rights to his story, Stryker put his foot down. Never would he allow himself to be portrayed by Johnny Cage. After the victory over Shao Kahn, Sub-Zero learned from Raiden the truth, that the Lin Kuei were ultimately responsible for the deaths of both Sub-Zero's and Scorpion's families. Enraged, Sub-Zero offered Scorpion a chance to share in his quest for vengeance. With the might of fire and ice combined, they were a storm of vengeful fury as they cut down their foes. Once justice had been done, Sub-Zero and Scorpion disappeared into legend, emerging from obscurity only to avenge the innocent. The forces of darkness will never stop this deadly alliance. Having finally brought about Shao Kahn's demise, Quan Chi was then tasked with growing the ranks of the Brotherhood of Shadow. Many warriors had perished in Outworld's invasion of Earthrealm. Quan Chi stole their souls and remade them to serve his master, the Fallen Elder God. The task completed. Shinnok repaid Quan Chi's service by ordering his execution, thereby eliminating a possible challenger to his rule. Quan Chi had anticipated this act of treachery, however, and resurrected Shao Kahn, the ultimate phantom warrior. With Shao Kahn as his enforcer, Quan Chi struck down the Brotherhood of Shadow and Shinnok. Quan Chi forgives betrayal from no one, not even a god.
controlled by Quan Chi's sorcery, Scarlet attacked and destroyed Shao Kahn. As Quan Chi's magic subsided, she realized her unwitting role in his plot to bring ruin to Outworld. With Shao Kahn's blood splattered across her body, Scarlet absorbed his immense strength. She used this newfound power against Quan Chi. Brotherhood of Shadow Warriors raced to defend the sorcerer, but their blood only served to make Scarlet invincible. In a battle between sorcery and gore-fueled fighting power, she avenged her fallen master. Having served her purpose, Scarlet disappeared into the shadows, awaiting Shao Kahn's rebirth. Freddy Krueger's bladed hands tore through Shao Kahn. The demonically enhanced weapons had been more than a match for the Emperor's dark magic. Though Freddy had saved Earthrealm, Nightwolf recognized him as an evil spirit, and in a shamanistic ritual, sent him back to the Dream Realm. But that decision proved ruinous. Freddy did not resist. He welcomed a return to immortality. From the dream realm, he will again create a nightmare in Earthrealm. 